As my regular viewers may know, I am a huge fan of the Harvest Moon series. In fact, Harvest Moon Tree of Tranquility was my number two pick of my favorite games that I reviewed in 2008. So it was a no-brainer when it came to wanting to play this game. And I have to say, even though it's very similar to the previous title, it's also really different. Now I might be tempted to do a battle video on these two titles to see which one is better, but honestly, I wouldn't know what criteria to judge them on, as they both have their own weaknesses and strengths. And before you write to me, I know there's another game called Ruin Factory which is basically the same type of game with combat. I did play it and I wasn't impressed. While it did have a lot more convenient gameplay, like having most of the shops next to each other and the ability to warp back to the house, it always seemed like a cheap knockoff of the Harvest Moon series and one that tried to do too much and never did anything just right. Anyways, back to Harvest Moon Animal Circus. You play as a boy or a girl who has come to this town to start a new life. Apparently everyone from the town that was populated in Tree of Tranquility has abandoned that place and has come to this town, as the characters are pretty much the same with some new additions as well. When you get to the town, they give you a rundown house to live in, but they automatically give you a coop and a barn to hold chickens and cows. And they'll even give you a free cow to start you out, so that's already a nice start in this game. The main gameplay in this series is all about farming. You'll plant crops and sell them for profit. Unlike Tree of Tranquility, you plant the seeds one by one, unlike the spread out way you originally had. I like it better this way as you have more control over the rows you want to make, and it's not just a bunch of 3x3 three three squares. The more you use an item, like a watering can or an axe, the more it will level up. And if you level it up enough, it'll let you do a power up, which will let you do more powerful hits or gives you the ability to water more spaces at once. However, unlike Tree of Tranquility, you can't get these special power ups just by using an item over and over again. You can have that special power up all ready to go, but if you don't don't have the upgraded tool you can't use it and I thought that was utter crap why if I know how to use a special move do I have to have an iron or copper version of an item to pull it off a watering can is a watering can they overcomplicated this part for no good reason and it's one of the more frustrating parts of this game in order to get the iron copper gold etc you'll need to mine for it just like the other game there are three mines in this game and they all pretty much play the same you'll break rocks to find ores and then you refine them you'll have to deal with the gases that are down there which will affect your status luckily most of these status effects will go away if you change floors so it's really not that big a deal unfortunately you can't upgrade your tools until you finish at least one part of the story so unlike tree of tranquility you can't just ignore the story however the story in this one is more interesting and immersive than the one in tree of tranquility so you won't mind too much you're charged with the task of finding the five bells of the land and ringing them of course it's not that easy as they've either gone missing or there's other problems affecting them which will involve you going on a fetch quest for some item you may need once you ring that first bell most of the game is opened up to you and you can pretty much ignore the rest of the story again if you want the world is quite large, almost obnoxiously large. There were quite a few sections where they had you running through fields to your goal. You can ride animals make the trip faster, but is that the only reason it's such a long walk? That seems so unnecessary. At least this time the loading screens are at a minimum. It will only take you one loading screen to get to the town, mine, or the seed store from your house. So that's a major improvement. However, I have to wonder if the long walk makes the time exactly the same as it would have been in Tree of Tranquility with all the loading screens. This game is a bit harder on starting up your farmer, as you have to buy almost everything in this game. You even have to buy an incubator for your chickens or duck. It doesn't just come with a coop like it has done in previous games. It's not expensive, it's just annoying that you have to buy it. Plus, upgrading your house, coop, and barn takes quite a lot of materials to do it. But since they have an always respawning forest of rocks and trees, you won't have to worry about running out of trees or rocks to break. There's also a new photography side quest in this game to do if you want, in addition to the normal fishing, cooking, and finding a spouse side quest that are normal in these Harvest Moon games. If I had to find any real negative about the game, it would be the camera. It's terrible. It would take a sky view shot and would be very hard when you're first starting out to see where you're going. It makes exploring every part of the world very necessary because it's very easy to miss an entire part of the world if you don't know it's there. And that's totally the fault of the poor camera. Overall, I'd say this game is a bit harder than Tree of Tranquility, but the story is way better than the previous title. So if you already own Tree of Tranquility, the question should be, is this game worth the upgrade? I would have to say yes, as it was a lot of fun and I found it had a lot more content in the game than Tree of Tranquility. And if this is your first time in the Harvest Moon world, you'll absolutely find this game a lot of fun and replayable. Buy it now.